Hi everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to be painting Liliarch from Massive Darkness. I'm starting off with a snake-like lower half and I'll be painting this with a combination of greens and yellow. I'm first covering all the scales with Warpstone Glow. Next I'm using Moot Green and I'm going to paint a layer of this close to the large scales at the center of the body. I've made a second pool of thinned down Moot Green to make a transitional layer between the two green colors. I'm going to continue this pattern onto the body along the ground as well. And exactly as I've done in the front, I'm going to make two rows of the Moot Green along the back as well, right down to the armor plates. And finally I'm making a very thin line of Moot Green mixed with a small amount of yellow and white just along the edges of the thick scales in the front. I'm also putting a small patch of this along the center of her back. Next I'm going to paint the eyes using the same colors I used for the snake body, except I'll be using a bit of black as well. First I'm covering the entire eye with Warpstone Glow. After that I added a thick line of Moot Green down the center of each eye. Now I did deviate from what I would normally do for a detailed eye and it didn't perfectly pan out. I wanted to have a thin line of black all around each eye. Normally when I do this I start by painting the entire eye black. This time I tried to just surround the eye with black and then edge my brush up with some flesh tone. Then I just leave a thin line of black behind. However by the time I was done all of the black was gone. Regardless I did need the black to put a thin slit down the center of each line of Moot Green. Next I'm using Midland Flesh as my flesh color of choice. The character art shows Liliarch as having greenish blue skin, but I'm going to paint mine like the Dungeons and Dragons creature that it's based on, the Lamia. Right now the Liliarch is looking very much like a trash panda, but by the time I was done painting all the flesh, she looked like this. Next I'm painting the scales in the front of the body. These are technically living scales, part of Liliarch's body, but I thought it would be cool to make them look like armor that had been attached. So I'm painting these with a 50-50 mix of Warplock Bronze and Bright Brass. I'm also using this on all the metal plates along her back and tail. For most of the shield in the front, I'm using a dark purple. This one is Nagaroth Knight. I'm also using this color on the gemstone on her waist and some of the plates along the breastplate. Next I'm going to paint the hair using three different colors. First I'm going to base coat all of the hair using Doombull Brown. While that's drying I've made up a 50-50 mix of Shining Silver and Glorious Gold and I'm going to use this to paint all the metal plates on the shield and the ornament around Liliarch's waist. I'm going to use this color to finish off the breastplate and Liliarch's headpiece as well. By now the base coat on the hair is dry and I'm going to mix in a roughly equal amount of bright orange into the Doom Bowl. I'm going to use this color to highlight all the hair, painting most of each strand of hair but leaving the dark brown in the recesses. Normally I'd save highlights until the end of a video, but this one is easy to do and even if it's a little bit sloppy it's still going to look good. I'm not trying to get the underside of the hair, just the places that are easy to reach. Once that's dry I'm mixing in about an equal amount of XV88 into the hair color to lighten it up. And then I'm going to use this to make lines of color along the length of each strand of hair. If the strand is really thick I might make two lines down the length of it.
So this is how the hair is looking so far, and as one final optional step, I'm going to get a small brush, and I'm going to make thin lines of pure XV88 down the length of each hair. This is going to give the hair a slightly more realistic look. Next up are the bracers. Liliark has three bracers, and I'm painting all of them with a dark brown. This particular one is Rhinoxide. Next I'm going back to Glorious Gold, but I'm using it pure this time. I'm going to use this to paint all the wrist bling that Liliark is wearing. All of the blades are going to be painted with the same three colors. I'm starting off by covering each blade with a layer of plate mail metal. As I was doing this, I realized that I missed the leather straps that hold up the armor plates. I still have Rhinox hide on my palette, so I'm going to use that. For all the handles and cross guards of the blades, I'm using bright bronze. I'll show you where I use the black paint later as one of the finishing touches for the weapons. So that's all the base colors on, and now I'm switching to washes. I've given Liliark very fair skin, so I'm going to be using Reichlin Flesh Shade, but mixed 50-50 with Lamian Medium. I'm using this wash on the entire upper body and all of the gold jewelry, including the headpiece. I'm also hitting the handles of the weapons as well. Next, I'm using Nuln Oil Gloss on the entire lower half of the body, so all of the scales, armor, and the shield. The final step before I do the base is to mix about 50-50 black and plate mail metal and then paint the back of each of the blades that Liliark is carrying. If a double-edged weapon is being used, then just pick one side of the blade and paint that with a dark metal color. Now I'm doing the base in the same way that I've done most of my Massive Darkness bases. I'm just marking off some random squares with some pure black, and then I'll randomly paint some of them with different shades of grey. And finally, I'm using some German Grey to paint all around the rim of the base. And that's the end of the level 1 part of the video. If you're done here, spray the model with some matte varnish and get it on the gaming table. If you're interested, in the next part of the video, I'm going to add a few extra touches and highlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some eyebrows using Mornfang Brown. The place these should go is clearly visible on the model. Next I'm going to touch up the skin using the original color. In my case, that was Midland Flesh. I'm avoiding the recesses so I still have muscle definition, and I'm only retouching the upper surface of the skin, leaving the underside shaded. I spent a lot of time on the face, retouching the forehead, the cheekbones, the nose, and the chin. To paint the lips, I took some bright red, and I mixed this into the flesh color to create a thin glaze. I then put two layers of this onto the lips to make them stand out. For the bracers, I used a light brown to do a simple dry brush highlight.
For the bronze plates along the tail, I did an edge highlight using a 50-50 mix of bright bronze and shining silver. Next I use Xerius Purple to trace the pattern on the purple part of the shield and to highlight the breastplate. I then follow that up with a smaller highlight of Gene Steeler Purple. Next I added two layers of Seraphim Sepia to darken the lower half of the gold on the shield. And finally I use some pure Shining Silver to do an edge highlight on all the sharp or raised edges of the blades. Once that's dry, spray the model with a matte varnish. And here is the finished product. Thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting the creation of these videos, and a special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. There's more on the way from Blackstone Fortress, Kingdom Death, and a ton of new Kickstarters that are coming out, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.